That's good we bally hooly Hollywood Where any office boy or young mechanic Can be a panic with just a good looking pan And any shop girl can be a top girl If she pleases a tired businessman Hooray for Hollywood you may Hello be Hollywood And welcome to this morning's Walk of Fame ceremony a special shout out to the numerous fans who are watching the live video stream courtesy of our media partner, Variety. I'm Laron Gubler, President and CEO of the Hollywood Chamber of Commerce, and it's my pleasure to be your MC today. Uh, we are delighted to uh, put another star in for a, a great honoree. Today's, you can applaud for that, sure. Today's. Today's 2,600 second star will honor George Siegel. Now, before I bring George to the stage, let me tell you a little bit about him, and feel free out there in the audience to cheer, cheer for everything, whatever you like. So George was born in Great Neck, New York. By the age of 10, he had a magic show, and he has been performing ever since. A veteran of stage, television, and film, George has amassed an impressive resume that runs the gamut from the lightest of comedies to the most heart-wrenching of dramas. Throughout his more than five-decade career, five decades, that's a lot. You know, surviving in Hollywood for five decades is a huge accomplishment. George has amassed five Golden Globe nominations, an Academy Award nomination, a BAFTA nomination, and he has received two Golden Globes. Now, many fans will recognize him from his successful seven-year run on the television show, Just Shoot Me. And more recently, from his confident, jaunty turn as Hollywood manager Murray Berenson in the hit series Entourage. And as a father whose son moves back home in the sitcom, retired at 35. However, George can currently be seen as the loving grandfather with Casanova-esque qualities on ABC's Highly successful 1980s themed sitcom, The Goldbergs. Which has to be one of the funniest shows on TV today. It's currently in its fourth season. George starred as Biff Lohman in the television movie Death of a Salesman. And that won the Primetime Emmy for Outstanding Dramatic Program back in 1967. Other TV appearances include... That was a while ago. So other, other uh, TV appearances include Private Practice, Pushing Daisies, Boston Legal, Law and Order SVU, Tracy Takes On, The Real Adventures of Johnny Quest, The Larry Sanders Show, High Tide, and Murphy's Law. Now, George's other television credits include 12 appearances on the couch as a guest on The Tonight Show with Johnny Carson and The Smother Brothers, where he showcased his talent on the banjo. I don't think he brought the banjo with him today. He also made multiple appearances on The Match Game, What's My Line, I've Got a Secret, Circus of the Stars, and numerous appearances on award show in shows, including co-hosting the 48th Annual Academy Awards in 1976. How about that? On the big screen, with credits spanning back to the early 1960s, he first gained critical attention as a distraught newlywed in Ship of Fools and as a POW in King Rat. He recently appeared as Jake Gyllenhaal's father in Lo Love and Other Drugs, as well as in the epic adventure 2012. 
His early work included Who's Afraid of Virginia Woolf? And for that performance, he received an Oscar nomination alongside Elizabeth Taylor and Richard Burton. He was also in The, the Owl and the Pussycat opposite Barbara Streisand. And A Touch of Class, for which he won a Golden Globe for Best Actor in a Motion Picture Comedy or Musical. Among his many feature comedies are Where's Papa? Fun with Dick and Jane, Flirting with Disaster, and Bloom in Love. For over 20 years, George has been an advocate, donor, and MC for galas benefiting the charity Erasing the Stigma, which aims to eradicate the stigma associated with mental illness. So, yeah, I could go on and on about his other many accomplishments over 50 years. But I think you've heard enough uh, to get us started. So please help me welcome to the stage now our honoree, George Siegel. Now you're going to get to hear George, but we've got a couple of guests who have asked to say a few words about you, George. Our first speaker is an Emmy-nominated actor and comedian, best known as a writer and performer on Saturday Night Live. And for his role as the memorable character Dennis Finch in Just Shoot Me, in which he co-starred with George. He also starred in the cult favorites Tommy Boy and Joe Dirt, amongst others. He continues to headline sold-out comedy shows nationwide and recently became a New York Times bestselling author for his memoir, Almost Interesting. Please welcome David Spade. Thank you, Leron. Thank you for reading our Wikipedias. <laughs> they told me to come here and speak from the heart or a piece of paper. I picked the piece of paper. <laughs> Kidding. <laughs> what can we say about George Siegel? Today we're here to honor legendary actor George Siegel. By the way, quickly while I have everyone here, I'll be at Zonkers Comedy Club in Chattanooga. I'll be at the Mirage next weekend. Back to George. George and I worked together on a sitcom uh, called Just Shoot Me a while ago. And a uh, few people remember, literally four. Um, oh, my God. <laughs> oh, they have it. Okay. And uh, he would always tell the press that it was like acting with four great actors in one cartoon. And I always thought this was funny until two weeks ago I realized that was me. I thought it might be Laura, but it was me. Uh, anyway, he's very smart and sharp and thoughtful, and clever, and would always demand perfection during shooting, as long as we got out of there by 10. <laughs> Whatever it took, but a hard out at 10 p.m. <laughs> uh, sometimes when we were shooting, I'd forget he was in so many great movies, and he worked with Elizabeth Taylor, and he was up for an Academy Award. Luckily, he reminded me of this every day. You can laugh at the end, it's fun. Um, some of my best memories with George are just uh, laughing very hard. He was so funny. We would laugh during scenes to ruin them. We would laugh before scenes. We'd laugh at lunch. We'd be in the parking lot bullshitting. I'd be getting advice from him. He was always sweet and uh, very nice to me. And he laughs at everyone's jokes. He has the best laugh in the business and he will always laugh, and for comedians, that's very, very generous and rare. I have some more nice things to say, but I'm running out of time, so I'll save the rest for the funeral. He wants me to, you know what? He wants me to say stuff like that, because if you're nice to him, he doesn't like it. He has a problem. He wants you to be mean. 
But I love the guy, George, obviously, and uh, you really, really deserve this more than 99% of the people here, so uh, aside from Woody Woodpecker, but it's great to see you. Thank you for having me. Thank you, David Spade. Let me do a few acknowledgments. We have with us the chair of the board of the Hollywood Chamber of Commerce. She's almost through her year as chair. She's the first dentist to ever chair the chamber. Please acknowledge Dr. Fariba Kalantari. And George, we also have a lot of stars who are here to, to recognize you today in your honor. In fact, almost the entire cast from the Goldbergs is here, and I can tell you, with all the ceremonies we do for TV stars, to have almost the whole cast here is amazing. So let's acknowledge them. We have Wendy McClendon Covey, <laughs> Troy Gentile, Sean G Giambaroni, AJ Machalka, Haley Arantia. Thank you all for joining us. In addition to that, please acknowledge the ad these additional stars who are with us. We have actor Richard Benjamin. <laughs> actor Peter Bonnerts. <laughs> actress Wendy Malik. <laughs> actress Paula Prentice. <laughs> and actress Laura Sangiacomo. <laughs> Thank you all for being here to help honor George. Now, our next speaker is a filmmaker, actor, comedian, author, and more. He came to prominence with a low-budget comedy film, Clerks, which he wrote, wrote, directed, co-produced, and acted in as the character Silent Bob of the duo Jay and Silent Bob. They have appeared in his follow-up films, Mall Rats, Chasing Amy, Dogma, and Jay and Silent Bob Strike Back. He also directed an episode of The Goldbergs. Please welcome Kevin Smith. How are you, sir? Uh, folks, I'm going to make this very brief uh, because after I leave here, I go down to the Chinese theater and take pictures with people for $10. So you can meet me there in a second. Uh, some people may be wondering, why, why are you up here? As, as you just heard, I, got, I was lucky enough to direct an episode of the Goldberg. So I did technically get to work with George and met him and stuff like that. But this is not a story so much about uh, working with George as George's uh, pop cultural significance and impact in the real world. Uh, I come from a small town in New Jersey and I was obviously not a very athletic kid. So my father would take me to the movies all the time. That was the thing we did together. Uh, he would also go to the movies with my mom at night sometimes. So one night, uh, I saw my parents have the worst fight that I'd ever seen them had in my life when they came home from seeing Fun with Dick and Jane. And I was young, and I only heard parts of the discussion, but I swear to you, at age seven, because this was 1977, this was the gist of the argument that I got. On the, in the car on the ride home, my mom had started talking about how charming and good-looking George Siegel was, and my thin-skinned father started getting really uptight about it, and the, it escalated, and this was like in the 70s, long before somebody had a list of who they could, you know, get with and shit like that. No hall passes in the 70s. So I remember this. The fight culminates with this. My parents uh, come into the house. They're barking. We don't know what it's about um, until later. And then they go into the room, and this is, I promise you, this is a true story from my parents very Catholic parents, this is what I heard come out of the room. If you love George Siegel so much, why don't you just fuck him, Grace? So right then and there, I was like, this is an actor for me to watch. Um, ironically, later that year, uh, 1977, uh, the film Star Wars would come out. Uh, I went to see that with my father. Right after that, there was a movie that I desperately wanted to see called Roller Coaster, uh, which starred George as well. And it was one of the only movies presented in sense around. So, you know, as a kid, I was like, the whole theater's gonna shake, and it's about a roller coaster. And my father took me to see everything, but refused me to take, take me to see that movie, because he told my wife, he's like, that George Siegel's in that movie. So my mother goes, fine, I'll take Kevin instead. And then my dad was like, well, no, then I'm going too. So I sat between two bickering parents 
watching Roller Coaster while my father openly heckled the movie. And my mother was just like, you just don't like it because I like him. And it went on like that for years. Years later, I got into the movie business. I was working at a place called Miramax. They made a film called Flirting with Disaster, which George was in. I went to one of the screening events, and then I saw my parents shortly thereafter. And since it was like a sticking point with my father for years, like you could just bring up the name George Siegel, he'd be like, that fucking guy. So, <laughs> so you know, I come to visit my parents, and I said, oh my God, I went to a movie premiere last night. And my parents, you know, we're from small towns, so like, who was there? They wanted to know famous people. So I was like, oh, I saw Lily Tomlin, I saw uh, Ben Stiller. And I turned to my father, and I said, I saw George Siegel. And my mom goes, oh, how does he look? And my father goes, Jesus Christ, this isn't funny anymore. Now that the boy's in the movie business, you could meet George Siegel. Stop this. <laughs> so my father sadly passed away years and years ago and stuff like that. But when I told my mother that I was working on the Goldbergs, the, you know, I, I called, she's like, oh my God, I can't wait to hear all about it. When I called her after my first day, I said, hey, I worked with George Siegel. She goes, how does he look? And is he into 70 year olds? <laughs> So when this is all done, dude, there's some woman in Jersey who wants to <laughs> seagull your George. Um, but the important thing is this. Uh, yes, you're getting a star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame, which is amazing, and it's a lifetime accomplishment that so few people will ever achieve. But more importantly, do you know how good of an actor you have to be to haunt somebody's marriage for 30 fucking years? <laughs> That's who you are. Give it up for George Siegel, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you, Kevin. Well, George, you can't leave yet, George. Come back here. It's time to hear from you. Uh, but just by way of final introduction, you know, today is Valentine's Day. I can't think of a, a better day to honor George Siegel than to have Hollywood present a Valentine to him on this day. So in your honor, we hereby declare this George Siegel Day in Hollywood. You know, I was 83 yesterday. So this is some birthday party, and all these people I love, all these people, all sitting across here, that's a lot of people to love, but there you go. When I was eight years old, I mainly wanted to be a fireman. And not because I wanted to be a fireman, but that's what you said, because people would ask you, what do you want to be when you grow up? And then I was taken to the Squire Theater in Great Neck, and they were playing this gun for hire. Higher than what? I didn't know. I didn't, I didn't know what, what that meant. But it starred Alan Ladd and Veronica Lake. Now, this is 1942, so there's very few of you here, although I know there are some who remember who Alan Ladd and Veronica Lake were. But he had a, a, a great speaking voice, very low and hypnotic, and for a kid like me, he just blew me away. And, and, and uh, he was wearing a, a trench coat, and he, he was carrying a 45. He was a gun for hire, I, I realized later. And he had Veronica Lake on his arm. Now, Veronica Lake was diminutive. She was about five feet, and she had long blonde hair, very pale, and it covered her right eye. I guess it's that eye. Really hot from an eight-year-old perspective. Anyway... At that time, at eight years old, I understood that that was a job that Alan Ladd had and that he went in every day, just like my father went in every day to New York for his job. And I thought to myself, and I knew it was only a dream, I wanted a job just like Alan Ladd had. I didn't tell anybody about that. Who would? 
But many years later in the Blackbird, I got to wear a trench coat and in the, 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 the Duchess and the Dirtwater Fox, I had a pistol. And that, that movie was green-lighted by Alan Ladd's son, Alan Ladd Jr., who looked just like Alan Ladd, only the brunette version. And uh, he, he was responsible for that, for that uh, movie. And in another serendipitous, on another serendipitous note, A, a few a few months ago, I found myself uh, up at the Academy of Motion Picture Arts and Sciences, and I was in a room with uh, with Tom Hanks and Annette Bening, and this woman walks in and says, "Do you know who sponsored you into the into the Academy?" And I said, "Yes, because I knew it was Rock Hudson and Mo Merle Oberon, who was also an actress way back then, and." has some friends here. She said, no, it was Rock Hudson and Veronica Lake. So that brought that dream around. And when I, when I Googled Alan Ladd and Veronica Lake last night, turns out when you, the first thing that you come to is the address of their star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame. So here we are all together again. I have a lot of people, as you can imagine, to thank for, for being here. Uh, mainly Sony, who staged this whole thing. But I wouldn't have got to Sony if I didn't get through Adam F. Goldberg. who has exquisite taste in his casting, wouldn't you say? <laughs> and these guys are giving me a whole lease, new lease on life. And they support me, they're deferential, they're sweet to me, and there's a great loving attitude that we have on the Goldbergs. And that comes from four years of having each other's backs, and that's very rare in life or in any work, workplace, that four these mis misfits that I work with, disparate people, and here we come together and we have each other's backs, and we cheer each other on, and it's a real good loving feeling. Of course, after we leave the set and go back to our chairs, there's no contacting any of them <laughs> because they are all lost in their palms and these machines that they take out. Some are big machines, some are small machines, some require earphones, in Troy's case, big earphones. But it's a new world. Every once in a while, there's one of them, Jeff Garland, he'll say, come over here, George, you might enjoy this. So I, I come over and I look at what he has, and it's usually some sporting event or some humorous scene or something. But I'm not casting aspersions. He's the only one who ever asked me to, come, come here, George, look at this, what I got. So I have a massage table, you know, where you lie down, face down, there's a hole there. That's where I go. That's where I can be found. But it all seems to work. And there's Annette, Doug Robinson, and all these people who keep the air clear so that Adam can be Adam and make his craziness. It's a nice group of people. Oh, the only one... The only one who doesn't look at his hand all the time, is not in love with his hand, is Sean. He's got to be in school. <laughs> this all started with Spade, you know, on Just Shoot Me. We all chatted and we were like a, a family. We all knew each other and knew each, who each other was and everything. And then David got this machine 
And after seven years, after kind of withdrawal, after seven years, he was more in love with his hand and his machine than any of us. But I never thought it would catch on. <laughs> Did I thank everybody? There's Sonia, 20 years she's been with me. Matthew and Polly and Nick. And it, where's Adam? Did Adam Siegel make it here? There's Adam. These are all Siegels. Adam is in show business. Nick is a fabulous guy. Anyway, and the Benjamins and the Bonners. It's really something. I mean, this is some birthday party. Did I say that at the beginning? <laughs> so thank you all so much. And again, thank you, Sony, for making this possible. Hello, boys. <laughs> thank you. All right, George, shall we unveil it? Let's do it. Come on down. Right, it's always been. Right. 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 Right
All right. And right here, guys. In the corner. In the corner. In the corner. Ah, in the corner. Yes. Hello, corner. George Headstains. Headstains. Right down George. And George right over this way. In the corner, George. Hello, boys. George right here. Hello, George. To the right corner. In the corner, George. Coming across, George. Oh, over there. Good, you got it. In the 